नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम so first i will i want to give some references at least so more, uh, you would have studied probably in commutative algebra 1 uh, algebra 2 you call it algebra 2 right i call it uh, commutative algebra 0 let us say right so that is atia uh, macdonald atia macdonald's very famous book very very uh, well written and uh, lot of exercises um and the other uh, book is this eisenberg commutative algebra with a view toward algebraic geometry i myself have not, not read this book uh, very much because uh, by the time i finished my studies etc this book was not there so i will read it this time if possible but i when i read few pages i felt little bit it's not rigorous so i don't know i will not going to follow either atia macdonald or eisenberg or any book which i will state here word to word i will keep changing uh, the proofs etc right so another one is this uh, this book uh, which is uh, i co-authored with my senior uh, author that is stosh and this book actually is first three chapters if you see they are the preparation for proving uh, a theorem called riemann roch theorem but so first three chapters are committed to algebra basically it was it is very fast uh, and many people told me it is very 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 touch to read it so basically in this course i am going to fill up more more in between and uh, this is a good opportunity for me also because Uh, i am preparing a second edition of this book okay and one more thing when uh, homological algebra uh, basic homological algebra i will deal with later part of the course at that time i will also use this uh, pamphlet tfr mathematical pamphlet uh, homological methods in commutative algebra and uh, actually you can download this from a tfr website website with that let me start recalling some of the things which you probably know but i want to be very sure and also i want to take this opportunity to set up the notation uh, as you know notation is very important and that if you have a good notation you can avoid many confusions N notations definitions and examples this will be the most stress on this course you will see the theorems will come out of this uh, uh, it will be easier to prove theorems if your notation is clear if your definitions are clear and the examples you have dealt with they are more and more wide range examples so notations so all rings are commutative so rings in this course for us are commutative and i will also assume they have unity and that usually i will write it one when i want to specify okay the, the uh, notations or rings i will use normally as a b c and sometimes also r s and uh, usually i will use the letter a for the ring and one is one a when there is a chance of confusion i will specify okay so now you would have studied in your first course there are prime ideals right that is in fact we would study that there are maximal ideals when the ring is non zero right that was cruz theorem so i am going to denote spec a this is the set of all prime ideals
in a and usually i will write the german letters to to denote the ideals and prime ideal therefore german p initially you might find difficult or you might get irritated but that i can't help because all these books which i am going to another book i didn't say was the jacobson's book on on uh, not the basic algebra but the earlier books uh, the three volumes uh, abstract lectures on abstract algebra 1 2 3 so p is the prime ideal this is the set of all prime ideals and this contains uh, maximal ideals spm this is a set of all maximal ideals m m maximal so these are the maximal with respect to the inclusion so among all ideals in a that it is so the ideals in a that set sometimes i'll denote by ia this is the set of ideals this set has has a order uh, namely the inclusion when i say order uh, most of you probably used to know partial order but my objection to that is that partial word is not doing anything and if you see the books written before 1950 for example if you see the book by hausdorff it's order order means reflexive relation it's a relation reflexive transitive and antecedent so such a set with such a relation is called an ordered set and this ia is an ordered set ordered with respect to inclusion and the maximal elements in ordered set is clear what is the definition right so these maximal ideals are precisely the maximal elements in this ordered set and you know your your ordered set may have maximal element may not have maximal element but here we have used cruel theorem to show that if a ring is non zero then it has a maximal ideal so this set is non empty this is cruel theorem very important there uh, also if you recall it ha- it has used zons lemma the zons lemma is a big big tool an abstract so usually the philosophy is as far as possible one should avoid using zons lemma but as you know many times it is not possible to avoid mathematics will not go without zons lemma so whenever necessary we sh- we should use and whenever whenever possible we should not with zons lemma so there is also many of the references i read they abuse zons lemma in the sense that when it is not necessary also they use it you know that zons lemma if you use zons lemma the proofs are existential and not not algorithmic so present day as most as you know most races on algorithms you should avoid zons lemma wherever possible okay and then you learn every maximal ideal is a prime ideal that means you have this containment and you would have seen example this containment could be proper then that means there are prime ideals which are not maximal ideals okay for example if you have an integral domain a zero ideal is prime but it is not maximal if your integral domain is not definite right and integral domain precisely means zero is a prime ideal okay so later on as the course progresses later on i am going to put more structure on this spec a this is called a prime spectrum of a and this is with additional structure i will put
right now it is just a set ordered set actually this i is also lattice so some of these words are uh, you might have not heard formally but as you go on you can pick up the definitions it is useful language and uh, okay prime spectrum so the additional structure is for example i am going to uh, you will put a topology i will make it a topological space or even more that will will keep so it becomes a geometric object to study and then this interplay will become commutative algebra algebraic geometry that will become very important to study okay this spm is called a maximal spectrum okay so now so when you have a prime ideal p you have a local ring associated to that namely a localized p and with a local ring for every local ring there is a field associated to that namely the residue field so this is local ring at p and usually kp this is the residue field at p and we have natural maps a to a localized at p and ap to kp this is the inclusion So this is not. This is yes. This is a residue field, not inclusion. Sorry. On the other hand, also we have this A mod P. This is the residue class ring. and and uh, uh, residue class ring and this residue field what is the relation this is the quotient field right this this one is the quotient field of this a by p so this is a natural inclusion map here so this is the quotient field normally a light quotient field has q of a by p this is the residue map here Uh, more on this you will get to see it when i when i uh, start giving some proofs okay okay now you would have i just want to recall a definition of a crew dimension and every time i will not use the word crew a uh, crew was the guy a uh, crew was a professor who actually propose this algebraic definition uh looking at the geometric definitions geometric definitions are older and and they were more intuitive also uh so krul introduced this algebraic definition and okay so let me uh so if you have an ideal a ideal in a then we have this residue class ring a by a oh before uh, before uh, so what is the crew dimension of the ring a that i will denote simply by dim a and one should not get confused with the vector space dimension because normally vector space i dimension i denote by capital dm and there is a suffix for example we have a vector space u over k where k is the field then this dimension you know already right this is the uh, the cardinality of a basis so this dimension i will denote by small d 
okay well, this is look at the chains of the prime ideals so p0 contained in p1 proper chains pr these are the chain in in spec a and take their length so length is r so r this is look at the integers r natural numbers r so that there is a chain of length r in the spectrum and take the supremum now there are several question supremum may may not exist right so it is from this definition it is not clear how do we compute a dimension for example now how do you think about dimension so in the first few lectures i am going to specialize the rings and find another ways to another characterizations of the dimension which will enable us to compute it and that is the idea of this so first topic i will take take up with where the rings are special rings are polynomial rings over a field or rings are finite type algebras over a field those that i will do it the first then i will do local for local rings and then we will do general uh, dimension theorem for the noetherian rings okay so this will take some time okay so this is the dimension crude dimension of the ring a now if you have any idea a the dimension of when i when you write dimension of a that is by definition dimension of the residue class ring so co dimension codim codim is usually first defined for prime ideal so that is for co dimension of a prime ideal is by definition the dimension of the local ring which is obviously the supremum of the lengths of the prime ideals which are contained in p because when you localize the prime ideals which are not contained in p they will become unit ideals so that is the this is also called the height of p denoted by htp height of p and then once you have defined it for a prime ideal then you can write it for arbitrary ideal codim a is by definition minimum of codim p where p contains a minimum over p contains a that is co dimension similarly for module if i okay so modules a modules i will usually denote by letters v w etc i am not going to denote by m n what you are used to it probably i am going to denote by v w etc because they are vector spaces vector spaces over a ring right the same definition only thing only two only assumption we don't have is the base ring is may not be a field and therefore the modules may not be free modules so modules may may not even be finitely generated and so on right but it is a good feeling that when you denote a vector space is similar notation okay so dimension of a module is by definition dimension of the annihilator of annihilator of a module is a what is annihilator of a module annihilator of a module is by definition all those elements of the ring a which kills everybody in v a times x is zero for all x in v this is annihilator and annihilator is an ideal in the ring so we already defined uh, dimension of the ideal so in other words this is the dimension of the ring a by annihilator of a annihilator of v 
Similarly, you have a codeim. This is codeim, annihilator of V. Okay, and the most one of the most important property of the dimension, if you know from topology, geometry, etc., that it is a local definition is local. What it means in algebraic is dimension of the ring is precisely the sup dimension of a localized p. This is if you if you study geometry topology more carefully, this is what the local will mean. I when I have a topology on that, I will explain you why is it same like the earlier one. Okay. So now, before I uh, uh, close it, uh, we should at least know dimension of some rings. So let us see some examples. All these may be repetition for you, but it is better to recall. Uh, so, so for example, some examples. Dimension of a field. Usually, I will denote the capital K later uh, to be field. Uh, dimension of field is 0 because there is only one prime ideal in the uh, field, namely 0. So, there is no chain. So, chain length is 0. So, it is 0. 2. Dimension of Z ring of integers is 1 because you know every non zero prime ideal is maximal so the chain will start at zero and the moment you go next one it is a prime ideal definitely prime numbers are there and the next one it doesn't go so dimension is 1 and there is nothing special about z this will work for any pid because you know every pid uh, in a pid every non zero prime ideal is maximal so, the typical examples of a PID are obviously Z, polynomial ring in one variable over a field K and polynomial ring in uh, uh, power series ring in one variable over a field. These are the typical examples of PIDs and essentially these are the only examples. Okay, this we will, we will check sometime. No, a little bit more. Uh, these are also Euclidean domains. These are also Euclidean domains. ED. Right? You would have heard the Euclidean domain word, no? So these are the only examples of Euclidean domains. There are more examples of EID, but Euclidean function. These are the essentially only examples. Okay. Third one. I am this now. This question raises what do we do with kx1 if you have a polynomial ring in several variables kx1 to xn or power series ring in several variables. This will correspond to what we have studied in analytic geometry Rn or Cn. Right. And uh, the dimension we have been dealing with, I do not know, in college days or uh, school days, the dimension should be n. Right. So, this is the first we will prove. The dimension of these rings is n. And more, more generally, we will try to see, we will try to compute dimension of now, if you have a field K, K is the field, then and suppose A is K algebra of finite type. Everybody knows this term, I think. Right? This means as an algebra over K, it is generated by finitely many elements or equivalently. This A is a residue class ring of a polynomial ring in finitely many variables. So, this is A is 
generated as a algebra so the notation will be this k small x1 to small xn these are algebra generators of a this is small x1 to xn may not be algebraically independent so but in any case there is a surjective k algebra homomorphism from the polynomial ring in n variables capital x1 to xn to this where xis go to small xis this is surjective this is evaluation map any polynomial evaluated at the small x1 to xn so i will be very very careful always uh, to write my variables as capital letters and small letters are arbitrary letters in the, in the ring right so and one more thing so when i say uh, algebra finite algebra so suppose k is a field k is field and a finite k algebra finite means finitely generated module doesn't mean cardinality finite finitely generated as a k module and even these earlier considered finite type over a field or finite over a field the base ring need not be a field when can make a definition when uh, we have arbitrary base ring r and algebra over r when do i say algebra uh, that algebra is finite type over r that means as an algebra over r it is generated by finite linear element or equivalently it is the quotient of a polynomial ring over r in finite linear variables similarly finite over r means as a module over r it is finitely generated and obviously finite will imply finite type but not conversely but not this and in this this case is simple to write this is k x1 plus 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 k x this is what finite mean that is small x1 to x n are k module generators of a so this notation is also clear that we are taking a k linear combination of x i all k linear combinations of x i and that will exhaust a so one typical example which we will deal very often is take any now let us do any ring r r is any ring and let us take a polynomial ring in one variable rx this is obviously finite type r algebra it's not finite but it's finite type see the more more often you use this word it will become more and more clearer okay now if i take a polynomial f in rx non zero non zero polynomial and monic monic means the top degree coefficient is 1 so monic of degree let us say n so that means f looks like x power n plus a1 x power n minus 1 or n minus 1 x power n minus 1 plus 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 a1 n plus a0 this a0 to an minus 1 they are in r they are the coefficients of and this n is the degree and if you go mod the residue class ring if you go mod f ideal generated by f this is the notation for ideal generated by f this is and let us denote there is a surjective map from rx to this natural surjective map and let us denote image of capital x to be small x so this is r small x so x is the image of 
capital X in the Sarasvati class again. Now, 1 x x power n minus 1 this is a generating set of let us call this residue class ring as a this generates the r module a this is because any polynomial you can divide by a monic polynomial and have a remainder you do not need field for this you do not the coefficient should be it should be monic and not only it generates a module it is it is a basis this is actually a basis this is r basis r basis of it. Right, because the remainders are unique. Right, this is a very, very, very important example which will be used again and again. Okay, so in this case, I will keep saying. So one says that if I say that a finite algebra of rank n, that means it is a free module, and the, and you probably have learned the theorem that. If I have a module, free module over a commutative ring, then the rank, that is the number of uh, cardinality of a basis, is well defined, and that is called the rank of a module. And this is not true for the ring if the ring is not commutative. So the modules, free modules, can have bases which have different cardinalities. So commutativity is also very important. So, this I will use it uh, uh, sometime. Now, I think we should stop.